A hungry mother sat down at an IHOP and looked over the menu while her three-year-old sat quietly and colored. However, she was shocked when the manager came out and told the young mother that they wouldn't be serving her because the toddler was making them feel uneasy. Before we continue, please take some time to subscribe to Daily Dose Like and share this video with your friends. When 25-year-old Alexis Bancroft sat down with her children to eat at IHOP in Hot Springs, Arizona, she probably expected that the worst that could happen is poor service or perhaps an unsatisfactory meal. What she didn't expect was to be kicked out of the diner because of the way her well-behaved toddler ate his food. Although most customers don't walk into a restaurant anticipating having the perfect experience, few do so with the presumption that they will be subjected to humiliating discrimination. Unfortunately, that's exactly what this young mother faced when she was booted from the popular breakfast chain. Bancroft and her family entered the restaurant and were seated before an employee came by to take their order. Oddly, the young woman had her three-year-old son William sitting on the table instead of in a chair. That's when the manager noticed what was different about the boy. William was born without arms. However, this debilitating disability hasn't slowed down the active little boy. Thanks to extensive therapy, he has learned to do almost anything his peers can do by using his feet. Unfortunately, the manager apparently took issue with his method. While waiting for their meals, Bancroft was greeted by the manager, who told her that William couldn't sit on the table because of health department issues. Although the mother explained that her son's disability obviously requires him to sit up higher, the manager finally got to the point. She was uneasy over the idea of William touching the syrup dispensers with his feet, claiming it would be unsanitary, according to Newsweek. I asked her what's the difference between hands and feet, Bancroft said. Bancroft then explained that she had taken William to the bathroom just moments earlier to wash his feet. The manager stated that while she hadn't seen her do that, she still felt uncomfortable with the child using his feet to handle restaurant items, the New York Post reports. When we got there, I carried him in, took him to the bathroom and washed his feet so he could eat, Bancroft said. I asked her, do you ask all of your customers if they wash their hands before they touch the syrup containers? Bancroft refused to back down, pointing out that refusing to serve her son because of his disability was undeniable discrimination. Realizing that there could be big trouble in the works, the general manager quickly changed her attitude, offering an apology and telling Bancroft that she would no longer deny them service. The manager was the one who discriminated against my son for having a physical disability, Bancroft said. All he wanted was some pancakes. The general manager later reached out to Bancroft after the mother's post on Facebook about the incident went viral. The woman apologized to Bancroft once again, stating that she didn't mean to hurt her feelings. However, the young mother claims that the experience has already left an impression on her son, Kark reports. The manager even messaged her, saying in part, I really think this was all a misunderstanding. I would never do that to your son intentionally or otherwise. That's not what I was trying to do apologizing, saying it wasn't intentional, but my son can't get that back, Bancroft said. The very next day, he didn't want to sit on the table to eat. He wanted to sit in a chair, which he can't really do. Bancroft says that William was self-conscious for several days, but ultimately resumed his place on the tabletop. Fortunately, he is a resilient child and hasn't let the incident get to him thanks to his mother's support. Other people may think it's not a big deal, but that is my child, Bancroft said. I'm his advocate, and you're not going to treat my kid like that. Expectedly, Bancroft's post garnered attention nationwide. Many expressed their outrage over the way that the general manager had treated the mother and her little boy. Others made their fury known by contacting the establishment directly. Several sources have confirmed that the manager who discriminated against little William was placed on leave. Soon after... IHOP President Darren Rebellas issued a statement saying that the incident was handled improperly and that the actions of the manager are not reflective of the chain's policies. As for William and his mother, they continue to destroy myths surrounding limb loss and physical disabilities. Hopefully, his story of incredible perseverance will help others to better understand that such disabilities aren't taboo. As the story gained traction online, Bancroft was flooded with messages of support from friends, strangers, and advocacy groups alike. 
Many parents of children with disabilities shared similar stories of discrimination, proving that this issue was far from an isolated incident. The incident highlighted the lack of awareness and sensitivity toward individuals with disabilities, especially in public spaces. For Bancroft, the response was overwhelming, but it also fueled her desire to bring attention to the rights of children like William. Not only did social media play a crucial role in amplifying the situation, but it also opened up a larger conversation about how businesses train their employees to handle situations involving customers with disabilities. Many commenters noted that the manager's actions were not just insensitive but potentially illegal under the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. Bancroft considered pursuing legal action, but ultimately chose to focus on spreading awareness and advocating for better training in customer service industries. IHOP's corporate office, eager to repair its image, quickly responded to the outcry. In addition to placing the manager on leave, the company announced plans to conduct sensitivity training for all employees across its locations. Our goal is to create a welcoming environment for everyone, and we deeply regret that this incident occurred, IHOP's statement read. Bancroft was hopeful that these actions would prevent other families from experiencing similar treatment in the future. Despite the company's efforts, the damage had already been done for Bancroft and her family. It's not just about an apology, she explained in an interview with a local news station. It's about making sure this doesn't happen to another child. Her voice cracked as she recalled William's confusion in the days following the incident. He didn't understand why they didn't want him there, and it broke my heart. William's resilience shone through, however. After a few days of hesitation, he was back to his old self, confidently using his feet to eat, play, and navigate his world. He's always been strong, Bancroft said with pride. I think that's what frustrates me the most. He's overcome so much, and yet there are still people who see him as different in a negative way. The community rallied around the family in the weeks that followed. Local businesses reached out to offer meals, services, and support. A nearby disability advocacy group invited Bancroft and William to speak at an upcoming event about inclusion and the importance of accessibility in public spaces. I never expected any of this, Bancroft said, but if sharing our story helps even one other family, then it's worth it. Meanwhile, William's story continued to inspire others. Parents of children with disabilities sent messages of encouragement, while teachers and therapists praised Bancroft for standing up for her son. Bancroft, who had always been a fierce advocate for her child, now felt a newfound responsibility to continue raising awareness. I'm not just doing this for William, she said. I'm doing this for all the kids who deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. The attention surrounding the incident also led to an influx of support for William's development. A local physical therapist reached out to offer free sessions, and a charity organization that provides adaptive equipment for children with disabilities contacted the family to see if they could assist with any needs. Bancroft was touched by the generosity, but also recognized the irony. While strangers were offering help, all she had wanted was for her son to enjoy a simple meal at a restaurant like any other child. As Bancroft reflected on the incident, she realized that it was part of a larger journey for her and William. This isn't the first time we've faced challenges, and it won't be the last, she said. But I know that William is going to keep proving people wrong, and I'll be right there beside him every step of the way. Ultimately, Bancroft hopes that William's story will not only change how businesses treat customers with disabilities, but also shift societal attitudes. I want people to see William for who he is, a bright, capable, and kind little boy. He may do things differently, but that doesn't make him any less deserving of respect and kindness. As the weeks passed, Bancroft continued to share updates about William's progress on social media. The viral post had connected her to a broader community, and she was determined to use her platform to advocate for change. This is bigger than just us, she said in one of her posts. It's about making the world a more inclusive place for everyone. As the media attention surrounding the incident grew, Bancroft was invited to speak on several talk shows and news programs. Each time, she used the platform to emphasize the need for empathy and understanding, not just for her son, but for all individuals with disabilities. It's about education, she would say. People need to learn that just because someone does something differently, it doesn't mean they're doing it wrong. 
William has found his own way to thrive, and that should be celebrated, not criticized. Her message resonated with audiences, sparking further discussions about inclusivity in everyday life. Eventually, Bancroft's advocacy extended beyond the local community. Disability rights organizations reached out, asking her to participate in campaigns and initiatives aimed at improving accessibility and raising awareness. What began as a hurtful incident in a small IHOP had grown into a movement for change. Bancroft never imagined that her role as Williams' advocate would take her this far, but she was ready to take on the challenge. If I can help change even one person's perspective, then it's all worth it, she said with determination. As time went on, Bancroft realized the profound impact the incident had not only on her and William, but also on countless other families facing similar challenges. She began organizing local events, partnering with advocacy groups to host workshops on disability awareness and inclusion. At one of these events, she spoke to a room full of parents, educators, and community members. This isn't just about my son, she said, her voice filled with passion. It's about all of us learning to see beyond disabilities, to recognize the strength and resilience in every person, no matter how they navigate the world. Her words were met with applause, but more importantly, they sparked a sense of hope, hope that change was not only possible, but already in motion.